The birth of modern science was preceded and accompanied by a development of philosophical thought which led to an extreme formulation of the spirit-matter dualism. This formulation appeared in the 17th century in the philosophy of René Descartes, who based his view of nature on a fundamental division into two separate and independent realms, that of mind and that of matter. The Cartesian division allowed scientists to treat matter as dead and completely separate from themselves, and to see the material world as a multitude of different objects assembled into a huge machine. Such a mechanistic worldview was held by Isaac Newton, who constructed his mechanics on its basis and made it the foundation of classical physics. From the second half of the 17th to the end of the 19th century, the mechanistic Newtonian model of the universe dominated all scientific thought. It was paralleled by the image of a monarchical god who ruled the world from above by imposing his divine law on it. The fundamental laws of nature searched for by the scientists were thus seen as the laws of God, invariable and eternal, to which the world was subjected. The philosophy of Descartes was not only important for the development of classical physics, but also had a tremendous influence on the general Western way of thinking up to the present day. Descartes' famous sentence, Cogito ergo sum, I think, therefore I exist, has led Westerners to equate their identity with their mind, instead of with their whole organism. The mind has been separated from the body, and given the futile task of controlling it, thus causing an apparent conflict between the conscious will and the involuntary instincts. This inner fragmentation mirrors our view of the world outside, which is seen as a multitude of separate objects and events. The natural environment is treated as if it consisted of separate parts to be exploited by different interest groups. The fragmented view is further extended to society, which is split into different nations, races, religious and political groups. The belief that all these fragments, in ourselves, in our environment, and in our society, are really separate can be seen as the essential reason for the present series of social, ecological, and cultural crises. It has alienated us from nature and from our fellow human beings. It has brought a grossly unjust distribution of natural resources, creating economic and political disorder. It has created an ever-rising wave of violence, both spontaneous and institutionalized, and an ugly, polluted environment in which life has often become physically and mentally unhealthy. The Cartesian division and the mechanistic worldview have thus been beneficial and detrimental at the same time. They were extremely successful in the development of classical physics and technology, but had many adverse consequences for our civilization. It is fascinating to see that 20th century science, which originated in the Cartesian split and in the mechanistic world view, and which indeed only became possible because of such a view, now overcomes this fragmentation and leads back to the idea of unity expressed in the early Greek and Eastern philosophies. In contrast to the mechanistic Western view, the Eastern view of the world is organic. For the Eastern mystic, all things and events perceived by the senses are interrelated, connected, and are but different aspects of manifestations of the same ultimate reality. Our tendency to divide the perceived world into individual and separate things, and to experience ourselves as isolated egos in this world, is seen as an illusion which comes from our measuring and categorizing mentality. It is called avidya, or ignorance, in Buddhist philosophy, and is seen as the state of a disturbed mind which has to be overcome. In the words of Ashvagosha, quote, when the mind is disturbed, the multiplicity of things is produced. But when the mind is quieted, the multiplicity of things disappears. Unquote. Although the various schools of Eastern mysticism differ in many details, they all emphasize the basic unity of the universe which is the central feature of their teachings. The highest aim for their followers, whether they are Hindus, 
Buddhists or Taoists, is to become aware of the unity and mutual interrelation of all things, to transcend the notion of an isolated individual self and to identify themselves with the ultimate reality. The emergence of this awareness, known as enlightenment, is not only an intellectual act, but is an experience which involves the whole person and is religious in its ultimate nature. For this reason, most Eastern philosophies are essentially religious philosophies.